so with about 3 months since that force released over in Japan, and it releasing in the West about a month ago of, as of this video, I think we've got enough data and enough testing to actually see where Bastion sits in the current meta game, and even highlight all the new builds and the keycards which have formed over the time. So this video will be more like a quick catch up guide, I'll recap it quite short and concise, so we'll be covering every single keycard from set 1 to set 4, and what you should be looking to buy into if you're trying to play Bastion, or what build you should be trying out if you're trying to play tournaments with it. So this is a general coverage, so if you want more videos in detail about certain builds and so often combos and all that, do let me know, I can only make them nowadays, I'm a bit more free. And yeah, without ado, let's begin. To recap, Best Friend is the first primary bright line of Gators Theory, featuring a Paladin-like playstyle with a typical full field beatdown, but if a twist, like how Elmar had great tools to what had great ones, this time Bastion focuses on having great trees of as, as a whole resource engine and a whole hard pool in general. So how with the deck works is the deck plays a primary passive early game, turn 1 to turn 2 not playing too much, but on turn 3 onwards, it's able to form powerful numbers with cards like Alden, Dark Strain, and all these cards form magic numbers like 30k with a typical Bastion, with a Bastion Prime being 28k, and then with their Vanguard skills, they will resend those regards to make multiple attacks. So this makes it a very powerful deck to play, especially in the in the slower meta game. But it's also a rather fragile deck, as not being able to play cards freely on turn 1 to turn 2 leaves you prone to being rushed. To combat this, Bastion has a lot of cards to gain advantage, and even gain drive tracks in the case of Format Chosen Knight to keep you back in the game. So why would you want to play Bastion? So Bastion is, like I said before, and even highlighted in the deck study report, it is a very fragile deck, but its consistent output makes it very appealing to players who like to win uh, like in a formula in a formulated way. It is kind of like a brain dead deck in some sense, but there's a lot of choices you need to make when discarding for your right deck, learning how to play around with Bastion's weaknesses, which is very apparent in this format. So with that, let's get to the key cards. For the key cards, Bastion is mostly the main key card, <laughs> as being the right deck, but cards like Elden is a very important card as it creates card advantage for Combust 2 and Soblast 1, which is a definitely a must play and arguably the most important card in Bastion right now. Then, as of set 4 especially, with Bastion Prime on the way, and Bastion Prime is not a personal right, you will need more ways to boost your regards to resend them, right? So, <laughs> to help this out, with cards like Dark Strain and even the Order card, Prime Protect are often played to make your regards be able to boost and consistently to make those magic numbers, even without a personal right. Then. On top of that, there are other key cards that, that people do play in Bastion, but we'll get into that slowly as I go through the different sections of cards besides this general core card. Now they have talked about the basic strategy and just some big things when thinking about playing Bastion, let's talk about the different types of cards. So to start off this section, let's begin with the extenders. Yeah, extenders. So why do I classify an as an extender? So a typical Bastion turn will go like Rearguard, Rearguard, Vanguard, then Vanguard skill, resend the Rearguard, Rearguard, swing the Vanguard. Or with like normal Bastion, maybe it's Rearguard, Vanguard, Rearguard, Rearguard, something like that. So the way we kind of like play around this is like, yeah, it's, it is strong numbers, but if you punch at low damage, it might not be enough to win the game. So to add more oom to your turn, we play cards like Format Shoulder Knights or Lagreal, which are the two most common uh, extenders we play in Bastion. But others do exist for other builds, like the Persona Right stuff from Set 2, which I put in the side there, and even Lepisto for budget builds, which allows you to get extra attack for 2 Gunner Blast. So generally, for these style of cards, they are played at 3 to 4 copies in a deck, usually no more than this and it helps you to push the game from, from lower damage. As is the case of Lagreal, Lagreal actually is a very flexible card if you don't want to use it, and depending on the build, you can even make a build dedicated to having Lagreal as your main attacker. Still, having these cards make it harder for opponent to guard. Imagine having like a 35k uh, column during a Dark Strain turn or something with a Lagreal there, and you opponent to guard that, then another regard, and then the Vanguard, where the Vanguard will then one of the regards. So this makes it having like giving you like a pseudo additional Vanguard deck, which is really nice. It is rather risky, but generally worth it. Format Chosen Knights is also another very popular option before Bastion Prime. Some people still play at two copies or something, but it's generally 
more favoured to non passion prime first builds or people who play in three, 2 to 3 prime maybe will consider it. It's a strong card for combat fun and super fun, making the deck very hard to damage deny if you play this card. As a common play for a slower deck to play against passion is to deny the first turn Elden to make it slower. Let's move on to the next category, which is going to be the defensive cards. So the main card I'll highlight is of course the new Embrace Dragon from set 4. Embrace Dragon is definitely the best among these 4 cards you see here. It basically is a free tanky shield as long as you want a grade 2 or greater vanguard which is basically free. And if you're on prime or grade 4 rather, uh, you get 20k instead of 10k. So in early game is very easy to guard against when you're being rushed. Let's say you'll see on rooks or forts, you can just, uh, let's say on forts, you can just guard 10k guard. Like, helps you mitigate the damage. And 10k guard is actually really powerful as uh, as with this series, naturally, all our great ones and great twos are all 5k's again, so having a straight up 10k shield is really nice. Coca Bill is another option that people used to play, but it does only shoot Apex Roll version. But it does have a higher ceiling if you have a full fill. Generally, Empress Dragon is a more consistent option, so that's why I usually choose to play it. The other options here are all the cards, so we don't really touch them either. Now, the last part of Gatrice I'll talk about is the Utility Gatrice. So, this is where cards like Rough Look. From the start deck for Sado, Safari, the new card, and Convoke all come into play. So, these utility get freeze are you played to help your strategy work more consistently. Let's say you're playing a deck with just Dark Stream Dragon, right? So, you want to have more ways to get the soul constantly. So, this is where Rough Loop may come in, helps you push damage, guarantee the soul, and be, and be just maintain maintain more soul, make, shit, make it very easy to maintain the two super scores, especially against decks like Prison. So, imagine you've got zero soul, you write Prime on top of passion, just one soul. You put Rough in, it's two soul. So not all you have to do now is guarantee one uh, great four version or great three version in your hand or your draft trap. It makes it really possible to play even in a kind of bad matchup. Then Fosado has that resist ability, making it strong for builds which requires heavy resource as or, or, or using their regards very very uh, quickly. So if Dex usually uses like, the set order, Fosado is a really common uh, choice and even in Dark Stream version, it's still a pretty good strong option, and it's a very persistent regard which you will not be able to re be removed from the field unless through like non-choosing effects. Still, it's a very solid card which I think every build should consider. Then, for cards like Sparare, Spar yeah, so this card's really strong for being in the back row to help your prime column hit bigger numbers, and especially for even like uh, Largo Passion, because Largo is able to resist when he's in the back row, he still gets the 5 from uh, from the Lagrim. Uh, it, it gives 5 to the Lagrim. Then if it's on the other side, if it stands, it gives you a free card. It's not the most amazing card, I admit that, but if you're playing a deck which requires you to dip for more pieces, the extra 1 draw here and their power eventually matter. And the last great, two, great 3 out of the highlight here is a uh, coin vote. I'm very critical of this card, it's not that great, but having a coin and consistent search engine in uh, fashion to maintain a feel may be actually useful someday. Not now, I'll say. But maybe one day, there will be more cards joining these ranks. So these are actually the three main category of cards you should put in your deck to fill in the, those missing slots. I want to think about now is like, how many gate trees do you end up playing in Bastion usually? So the common option used to be like 26 gate tree Bastion, which includes the right deck. So this makes it like, oh, four PG, you just have 4 PGs and all gate trees and right deck. Yeah, makes sense I guess, but like, I think we said 4 Bastion, we Bastion Prime being a great 4. We can actually cut, we actually have to cut some of our great trees to play Passion Prime. Or you're playing Lagrim Passion, might even be some other cards you want to play instead of great trees. So for those builds, maybe 23, 22 may be a pretty okay amount. Now let's go through the first build. The first build I'd like to share is of course, the one that uses Suction Dragon. And it's a build I really really like. This build features cards like Rough Look to Maintain Soul, and Dark Strain as the other core card of the deck, and make sure you have a consistent way to get feel. As if you play the other build and such in a bit, you don't have to worry about getting more pieces. With this build, all you need to do is focus on forming a field of great trees and using a Dark Strain to end the game by giving all your great boost. So, this is really strong with Version Prime, as I mentioned before, as giving boost until end of turn with Dark Strain, you can boost all the regards for me like 28, 28, a uh, regard be not as strong, maybe it's a regard 28 too. Then when you, when you do return your Gatrice Depression, your 20k column will get 20k power because both your Gatrice get power. You'll be for 48 and 48. So this is the core version price, uh, basic playstyle, and it's a really consistent way to play Passion Prime. 
because like Alden, Ralph Luke being always good, and we are still playing the person right copies as I mentioned the match the match up against our prison. So this is a very normal way to play Bastion Shrine, but it can be really effective. Some flaws with this build in particular is of course how it fares against control, as having no foresight and all this puts you effectively on a counter, so you're forced to play against faster decks, you really have to go all out as soon as possible. Now to the second build, which is uh, the order card, which is Pride to Protect. So this is the set of the order card from set 3, which I briefly mentioned before. This is what it does basically, on play, discard one card with hand. Once it's set, during your turn, all your creatures get boost. So this makes it kind of more consistent than Dark Strain, as Dark Strain doesn't have to keep living on the field. As once it's set, it's always there. But at the same time, playing too many copies of this card can be problem problematic, as it's a very dead card. And in a deck like Bastion Prime, where you only need to maintain a full field to push your Bastion Prime, it's really important to have regards. So, to, to, to meet this kind of uh, requirement, we play cards like Supare and Fosado to help you maintain a board or maintain some card advantage throughout the, throughout the game. I would say between the two builds, Dark Strain is more, more consistent, but if you want a deck with a little more leeway and more freedom of how it plays, definitely try um, the set order version. Personally, Dark Strain is the more favoured build, other than the control matchup. I feel with these two builds especially, there is a middle ground we need to form with this build to make the deck more resistant to control, especially with the cards like Meteor, the whole Meteor deck in the meta, even Basfaraga in sense, even in this prison in general. Now I'll highlight an alternate build, which is the Lagro Bastion build. So you might recognize this build on my channel as I've done several videos covering it. But this is uh, my version of it, updated to set 4. I really think this build is really, really not that bad, and it's, I wouldn't say it's inferior to Bastion Prime most of the time. And so Bastion Prime is very strong, it does have some consistency issue, which is kind of rare for Bastion. But because having the extra grade 4 in the deck means some of your early games get 3 checks might be a little dead. And of course, just having those grade 4s as regards is very useless. So with that regard, Lagro Bastion is for those players who want to end the game as soon as possible. And we maybe just want to test a different approach into the meta game. The build now basically still plays a typical referrals, uh, Supari and all that. But it still now adds the new draw triggers for defense like most of the builds right now. So I think right here I'll start to mention a bit about the trigger lineup. So Passion benefits from having a lot of critical triggers as it helps you to bridge that damage gap with your strong powerful columns. So I suggest always maintaining at least 7 crits in your deck the over trigger being Amity Noah, so that's 8, eight triggers then your 4 kills if you want to play that then this is where the argument comes in do you play the draws or do you play the fronts? as you see with all the videos i shown currently I choose to play the draws after a while while I am a big fan of the front trigger being a solid 20k shield and a very consistent trigger the draw triggers right now is really important to make sure we get enough regards to play especially in this set format again Here's a quick like budget section for those who are looking into playing Bastion on a budget. But I'll definitely recommend spending your money first of all on Elton, as it looks into the stable which will never be replaced for Bastion, unless something severely broken comes up for it. And of course, if you're looking to play the Prime, definitely grab at least two or three Prime. I, if you want to future food yourself, definitely grab four. But there's a chance that in the future you might get better support for Great Freeze, which may make us even cut down Prime to three, which even some deals currently do end up doing the uh, results. So definitely put your money in the Elden first, then you can proceed to buy a version price. The other stuff I've been for like the, 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 the Dark Strain build is generally all common and rare, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And for start, it's, it has quite settled down in price in general. But for those who are like really looking in the very low, low end of budget build, I have a very cheap budget build here, which is more of a beginner build for if you want to get your friends to play and they have some start deck lying around. Yeah, here's a here's a very quick build I made up to just play around with your friends. So remember, if you wanna buy into cards, buy into El Elden first, then if you wanna choose to prime, then yeah, go into prime. If not, spend your money to get some sort of barrage, your shape to populate your build for you. So now that you've come to the end of this kind of beginner guide, I hope you guys enjoy and have a kind of idea of how to, how you wanna build Bastion. If there's some simple builds here and there, and just covering the different choices and, and choices you must think when playing the deck. So this is a really short introduction video. 
to bring you up to date about the meta game of Bastion. But if you want to see more about other decks, do let me know in the comments below about uh, especially Kita, I generally know Kita and maybe even like Dark Sids, I'm getting more hang of it nowadays. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all the usual stuff. And I'll be back with another video. We set 5 coming up, especially the blasters. I'll go return back to my typical top videos. I know it's been a while, so for those to stick around all this while, thank you very much and I'll see you really soon. For the of the readers yet after all. Okay guys, bye.